So uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, I am going to get us right to where we were last time and get started. Uh, so uh, quickest recap we possibly can. Um, pretend the snow is not there on this map. It's oh, currently spring. I thought we uh, ended at Orvis that we, we settled here, but never mind. Oh, did did we already say yeah. we were going to Orvis? Yeah, I was the, probably going to send you guys over there. So. Anyway. Yeah, the intent was to go there so we could get fitted up with our uh, fire resist skins. Okay, I that was kind of what it was in my head anyway. I just forgot that we had said that. So let me send you to Orbit instead. Um, Badoop. Everyone is here. So, um, last time, uh, you went to a place that the Salamander Magni has told you was uh, the lair of Nashurala and Zoromos, their forward fort um, that they would use as their base of operation while uh, making their own expeditions out into the Redshift Zone to search for treasure and to harass you all. Um, you went there and you found a... Uh, uh, fortunately, you were hidden uh, and were able to watch and spy on a uh, salamander um, another one, uh, prostrating itself before the raised drawbridge um, over the, the lava river. Uh, and it was not let in at any point that you saw. Um, you waited it out about a day. Um, nothing really happened. Uh, the first wave started, and um, you didn't see anybody come in or out. You didn't see any really uh, activity at all besides the salamander. Uh, and you made your way back. Um, through the swamp, uh, back to Orvis. Um, checking in at Fort Harpum, um, you found out that things were all safe at uh, Aris's Obelisk. Uh, every, everybody's okay up there, so uh, currently Brigadier Demira and um, uh, Expeditionist uh, Mortier's team are standing, staying up there as uh, basically a guard team. Uh, also, uh, they got beat up pretty bad uh in the in the salamander fight much like you all did so they were taking some time to recuperate um but uh they've also been working on uh getting some small fortifications started on that uh tower um so that's well underway uh in the meantime um dex and a few other expeditionists uh took the salamander magnius back to orvis um uh, where he is, he remains your uh, cooperative prisoner. Um, and uh, by the time you got back to Harpo, uh, um on the coastline, uh, Dex had arrived back at Orvis himself uh, with Magnius in tow. Uh, the plan seems to be to uh, get that salamander on his way off to the Empire. Uh, out of harm's way and out of any position for him to potentially uh, act as a liability for you all as well. Um, so they're going to do their best to get him to some some safe location um, outside of here. Um, and uh, right before we ended last time, uh, Amber Green uh, attempted to commune. Did yeah, I did my, my divination. Do you remember what the uh, divine knowledge that you gained was? Oh, um, let me let me let me think because I vaguely do. It was that I I can help you out. Okay. Uh, so uh, you ask, uh, you ask deep inside, up above. Or where wherever um, that goddess lives, um, where the uh, where the dragon heirs are planning to attack next, and uh, what you got was um, you know, a, pl a place that had been life but was now a place of death. Right, uh, 
they they range far and wide, but currently their target is a place that was once a home and is now uh, death. So, um, that answer linger while you all return to Orvis. Um, so, so I have a question for Ambergreen. In its phrasing, does it mean like it will most assuredly become death, or it is now like? And uh, I, believe, I believe it said it is now death. Yeah, it is now death. Was once a home, but is now death. Yeah. Just wondering. Yeah, and uh, according to the spell, it can indeed be cryptic. So this isn't one of those things where you like understand the truth of the answer. Um, nor does the spell take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome. Uh, and also of note is that the, um, the, the span of this is within the next seven days. So, uh, you kind of, uh, um, you kind of put the safety rails on that by asking what they're currently planning to do, uh, so right. it was well within the time limit, um. This could very well pertain to the uh, company in the Northwest as well, and not even pertain to us, because it was asked of all the heirs. That's right. Um, That's true. What does your god think of death? What When when your god talks of death, is it is it a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? A Transitory? I think it's a muse. Uh, yeah. uh, whatever sort of divine thing that's not here on this plane. Something... <laughs> You, you've performed a divination and someone gave you an answer and that, that someone's got to be something important. It was the music, man. The answer was in the music. Well, what's that song have to say about death then if you kept playing it? <laughs> it's kind of in the, it's in the notes. It's in the tone. Well, improvise a verse for playing? me. Do you even remember it? Uh, I was jamming. I know you were. That's why I'm asking if you remember it. <laughs> Only kind of the overall kind of gist. Well, if you, if you close your eyes, so Naya does her druid thing. And meditation is, is common to druids of a sort. So close your eyes. And she touches, she puts a, a clawed arm, hand, up to your heart. And she asks you to remember when you were jamming. That feeling, where did your mind go? Is there any kind of place associated with that jam? Huh, all right. Um, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I can, what I can remember of it because it, it you know, it's, it's, it just happens. It's, it's inspired. Right. I understand that it's inspired and spontaneous. That's why I'm asking you to close your eyes to try to remember what happened. So what would I have to, like, can I just, what would I roll on this? Sir? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I don't know that you'd have to roll. <laughs> um, uh, you, so you know the ritual that you did to do this. and you could Yeah, but I'm it. asking him to recall his jam, which was um, off the top of his head and spontaneous. Right. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think that's within Ambergreen's power, unless you don't want it to be Ambergreen. No, that's cool. Okay, yeah, then I could, I could play a bit of the song then. And what does that evoke? What does that evoke in terms of a memory of a place? Anything. Yes. What was going through your mind when you were jamming? Or were you just in the zone? Well, uh, essentially what you, what you received, um, what you received when you did this divination was, um, You haven't done like like historically, Ambergreen has not done met much uh, communion or prayer so far. He has sort of been a conduit for this power that he has access right. to. 
uh, right. more so than than like speaking to it and receiving answers from it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, so this is uh, sort of an unusual thing for him uh, currently. But, yeah, it's the first um, time I've done an, ex an exploratory jazz session. Uh, but um, it, it's it's sort of like um, the um, ob obviously you know you know your muse and she speaks to you sometimes in your dreams even if you don't understand what she says still right um, and it's sort of like um, inside uh, your mind she takes your hand and joins you and uh, that sensation goes along with the hundreds of voices that make up um, what she is uh to through that uh provide fragments of information um so it's it's almost like you are making a um a deal with your muse that you you share this moment with her and during that she provides you with this information. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is that conscious? Is, is that is, I mean is that happening consciously or is that hap you know the making of a deal thing? That doesn't strike me as something that it, it's uh, it's it's sort of like for Ambergreen. Uh, that Ambergreen I, probably don't, wouldn't don't do. Me, don't don't let me like like fill you, fill you with words that aren't true but um, uh, I I see this situation as uh, one where, uh, as I described it, she's essentially taking your hand. But Amber Green would have first reached out his hand, uh, seeking help, right? Or in yes, inviting, okay. Inviting, All right, yeah, I see for, that. Yeah, inspiration. Yes, I see that. Okay, so then inspiration is a good way to put it. Like the knowledge. I was gonna say inspiration time. works, but the making a deal part. That's. I don't feel like that's something that that Amber would have done consciously. Like, so, let's make a deal, honey. More more than making a deal, more like inviting to dance. Yeah. That's Do you okay. know that the um, traditional? Like, this sounds like the traditional Greek uh, uh, Greek muse, and uh, the traditional yeah, yeah. Greek muse. When you prayed to them, you were in the prayer offering a deal. A sacrifice of self for the enlightenment and for the guiding. Right. So, and, and, and I, a sacrifice is part of the divination. You, you, uh, Amber Green produced a, a song and sacrificed um, that. Uh, well, technically, he sacrificed the the flute he used for it. But um, so, you know. so where I do understand where you're coming from, it's definitely not um, warlocky, though it can invoke similar sort of uh, Lovecraftian or even warlocky fairy deal kind of uh, elements. Uh, the muse is, uh, at least in the sense that I'm understanding uh, uh, Amber Green's muse, uh, that, that like the making a deal part is like classical Greek muse. Like the... muses you didn't want to make deals with unless you were like willing to literally die in your 20s to make beautiful art. Yes, uh, the main difference between a warlock and a cleric is that the uh, uh, patrons of a cleric are care, care about a lot more and much larger scope than any warlock patron ever could or would. Um, uh, yeah, so I'd agree. Exceptions apply when it comes to goose, but... Um, uh, uh, essentially, uh, God has uh, many, many, many uh, conduits, and Ambergreen might not know this, but his goddess certainly has many other clerics and angels and, you know, other sorts of those things. I mean, he he currently believes, I, I think, that uh, he is particularly special. And yeah, certainly. Perhaps one of the only people to know of this creature um but uh as she is she is actually a god uh there would be many uh and he might even only be talking to one small piece of her uh whereas a warlock might literally just be a fairy or a hag uh 
that wants that has a, a a lot of power, but you know they're they're self they're they're contained in their own little area, not even not even the world, let alone a whole plane. Um, so, uh, or or uh, even an well, and a warlock's agenda tends to be small in terms of the individual. This is the power that I want right now. Yeah, that's a, that's uh, a I also. Intimate. Yeah, I liked what I uh, what I did with um, Sereno, which was uh, her single level in cleric uh, represented uh, when her deity, her contract, actually had the power of a pantheon, and then when it was cast out and excommunicated from said pantheon, uh, became uh, becoming heretical. That uh, by remaining within the contract, that turned her into a warlock. Oh, that's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, uh, that that. You know that's that's a perfect way to look at it. Uh, I didn't know that you didn't know about um, Serena's back history and why she multiclasses uh, cleric warlock. Sorry, it's hard for me to keep up with your guys' other games because they're so late in my time. I I can't ever yeah. watch them. Totally. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so the, this this information that Amber Green gets is divinely inspired, and I mean it. It's up to you all whether you want to trust the bard who is saying, guys, I found the answer in the music. You've seen him do plenty of magic before, and those of you who like have a sense for that sort of thing can kind of tell that it's obviously divine in nature. Uh, plus, he's done a, you know, a ton of healing and stuff. Holy uh, shit. Uh, I, just I don't know a... that Naya would know that it was divine, but certainly inspired. And perhaps God touched. She doesn't know. Ma Ma Lauren would probably know. Isn't there like a place in like the swamp or like the forest that was once like a home but is now totally overgrown and kind of terrible? Um, let me think. Well, there, uh, yeah. you are you thinking of the flying land? I could be. I don't know. I just. I vaguely remember. To be mm. honest, we haven't. We haven't been all that many places in the swamp proper. Uh, we've got uh, the temple, which you guys have have conquered. You've got Orvis, obviously, which you are currently standing in, um, and has been uh, well and properly upgraded to a certain extent. Uh, the Mother's the Grove, right? Coastal Fort. Uh, yes, the Grove. Uh, everything has been fine there, as far as you all are aware, uh, for a very long time. What was the problem there, though? Like, didn't they have issues? Till this house last time you checked was okay. Uh, the issues at the Grove were resolved when you guys put up the obelisk there. Um, because what had been happening is, uh, this is going a couple years back in game, is uh, grandmother was um, using her ability to draw out the shifting effect from creatures into right. herself, taking it on uh, her own to to keep her grove healthy. Essentially, the the, the pixies and other creatures that lived there, she would um, heal them uh, in exchange for having herself. And over the centuries, she became uh, old and withered. Um, but with the protection of the obelisk, that is much less of a problem for her. And her um, her grove is able to stay safely in the in the area uh, of safety. And um, okay, good. Any occurrences that she has where she has to, uh, she you know that she does still occasionally find creatures that have been aff afflicted and heal them. But uh, where that used to be a very regular thing, it is now very rare. Um, and does not hurt her nearly to the degree that it once did. Uh, where but it she... doesn't change the history, right? It, the damage that she took on to herself before Correct. is still there. Uh, she yeah, says... well, this this could still be a mislead, right? Which I'm starting to lean towards. But um, like, what is the state of the grove? Is it growing? Is like she inexorably damaged? Is this a uh, climate so, change kind of uh, scenario where it's going to be changed forever and we don't know? 
Like it's essentially um, uh, been a home, a grove, and dryads now are dead. Dryads are um, dying. the sort of quasi immortal tree spirits that you would see. So they 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 layer in a tree, um, and they live for long enough that they may as well be immortal. Uh, and uh, according to grandmother's testimony, she was not that old when the redshift began. She was only a few centuries old herself. She would have had a long, long life ahead of her if she did not spend a millennium inside the redshift uh, taking this uh, damage onto herself. Uh, that has aged her great. But uh, now that she's kind of been able to pause that, she's she's fine. Um, She's not. She's not going to keel over in the next year. She's probably going to be totally okay for a few more centuries, at least. Um, uh, you know, remains to be seen what the super long term effects of that stuff are. Um, but uh, she also knew that if she kept doing what she was doing, her life would probably come to end in a few hundred years. And she was okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Now, now maybe this is just a. Uh... It was just now fun. the only thing that's really changed over at the Grove is that you have uh, you have it as a safe location for expeditionists to stop by every now and then. Mostly people who are trusted in the area because she still has kind of a a, a, a careful protection over her Grove, um, but she does trust most of the people in the, in the mission. Um, uh, but uh, also the uh, the Blight Child, the seed was brought there. And uh, the child, Kapua, um, grew from a seed uh, and has been living there for a time. Uh, yeah, just might be wild speculation. Like, literally anime-inspired stuff. Probably ignore it. Like, my, my, my reasoning was literally, like, maybe the damage she took on or something like that would have, like... Stopped the growth of the um, uh, of the of the grove, right? That it was a safe haven, yes, but not a growing and alive one, kind of like one surrounded by a dead tree. And so I went off on a wild speculation of, you know, maybe this is what they mean, because well, yeah, because the the reading, like you said, or the uh, interpretation of the answer of Bomb Goods Muse. Uh, can be cryptic and vague. So I was in a cryptic and vague mindset. So uh, I'm going to say that this all, this dialogue all took place uh, on the way back to Orvis. Um, eventually we get back there. Um, you guys are able to, to huddle up before the redshift arrives. Um, uh, Nimbus, to answer your question, uh, Smithy would tell you that uh, they might be able to send somebody to go collect some samples from the floating island. Um, it's certainly worth looking into. Uh, they could see if there is anything inherent in the earth that causes it to fly. Uh, nobody has really tried removing any, um, uh, you know, uh, ground, um, from it just yet, so it, it it may be worth looking into. Uh, they'll uh, they'll see if they can spare a team for it, and uh, and hopefully have somebody back pretty soon on. It. Um, but also, right uh, from Ignis, it should be a pretty quick trip. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not far. Um, as long as they have the, um, as long as they have the the people to spare. Um, regarding the stuff that was, uh, provided last time, um, Pontus has had a full week and a little bit more to, uh, handle those salamander leathers. Uh, he has, uh, as, as orders were provided, he's kept them well out of sight of your, uh, fiery friend, um. And um, and giant bones, yes, those are there. Um, uh, so uh, basically, uh, we're, we're, regarding the salamander leather, um, 
you found enough to make um a uh suit of fire retardant um like a, a vest and pants for everybody in the party. Wow. That is fantastic. We've got a lot of material there. The last stuff we got was like terribly butchered. This time it was a much cleaner job and there's a lot more of it. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean you got you got like again like a, a man sized cut from from every salamander. So um I don't know fine, if this fine. has to... sorry. Go ahead. I don't know if this has to be the case, but uh at least for Alvis Taver, uh canonically the pants are chaps so that you can still wear your pants. Understood. Um yeah, these can be whatever design you want them to be, realistically. Um but essentially uh it's clothes that you can wear under your armor that will give you fire resistance. Um everybody has those now. Uh, wow. just need, you'll just have to spend, you know, uh, an hour or two with him uh, during your downtime um, to get properly fitted, and he'll hand them over. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, I, uh, how much does is there it weigh? Extra weight. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, actually, that that is a great question. Um, they would weigh as much as uh. Well, let me let me see. What what do regular uh, clothes weigh? I think those are pretty lightweight. Uh, we'll call them common clothes. Three. So common clothes would also include like shoes and stuff. So we'll call this one um, two units, two pounds. May I pay Pontus to make the narrative declaration that canonically everyone's wearing chaps? Uh, I, I, I think everyone else has to decide whether they're wearing chaps. Okay. <laughs> Nia wants. Maybe so... the make the best. <laughs> chaps are kind of like say what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. You're again, killing it's, me. It's up to you. I don't think. Uh, the only time you would ever see and ever have seen Nimbus wearing chaps is when he was playing a character who wears chaps and wears tights that are the same color of his skin. Uh, of course, with my skin being blue, that was a little easier to match. Uh, <laughs> to kind of look like his bare bottoms available and then, you know shenanigans about like oh you know his butt's showing you know it was <laughs> <laughs> yep that was that was one of the more crude ones we we only ran that one say, twice you, you run you run body uh, shows then apparently <laughs> oh just you know whatever's whatever's in the book we had we had a tome with uh seemingly an inexhaustible amount of material we just pretty much go through them you know Every time we'd either do the same one we just did or do the next one in the book. It says here the tome of the lives of the Saturday nights. <laughs> that was uh, definitely a chapter. Um, no, no, no. That's why it's a narrative declaration. I, I pay Pontus to play the prank that if you want fire retardant pants, they have to come in chaps. All right, well, I've added fire retardant armor to Naya's list and uh, given it a weight of two pounds. Okay, go ahead and uh, everybody who's wearing that, uh, put fire resistance in your resistance, or just, just fire in your resistance in second. Oh, okay. Uh, so you remember, remember. Uh, aside, welcome to the club, everyone. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, where do we put that? That's right next to your cold resistance. Naya. It's down below the uh, skills and stuff. Oh, damage resistances. Okay. Um, only thing he warns you is uh, I know the situation uh, with, with, with the, the salamander. Uh, you may just want to, you know, keep those in your pack until, uh, until he's heading out. Um, Dex told me they're planning on sending him over to Maricus in 
uh, as soon as the wretched is so, so I uh, did bring that up. Did it ever come up? Like the very like red elephant in the room whenever Magnus and I were like together. You wear other clothes on top of it, don't you? Oh, that's the point of the chaps. Yeah. The leather um, goes over my finery so that I can still wear all of my fine gold stuff. I see. Um, he might not have noticed it on you specifically. I mean, for all he knows, you're just wearing red, you know, red scale armor. Um, but if, you know, if all five of you come rolling down the road wearing wearing red scale armor when you weren't before, he might start putting the pieces together. Well, most certainly, most certainly. I just wanted to know hey. for like the sake of I, I'm the person he sees as maybe giving him a job if we are able to get him uh, to uh, Alvis Taver's guild. And I would not like him maybe turning down a job or going elsewhere if he suddenly realized, hey, he was wearing the skin of my people. Uh, and then mean, he offered me a you, job. He, he probably had a lot of other stuff on his mind at the time. Probably, but also you should have thought of that before you went ahead and did this. From Naya's perspective. <laughs> you should have thought these barbaric humans might skin us and wear our clothes as I don't know. She's I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, really? I oh, okay. I didn't think anybody was like after the fitting going to actually wear them out. I figured everyone was going to keep them in their packs, and then once we're out of town, maybe around Thesbridge, we'd you know take a moment to uh, you know suit up, as it were. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It probably. Like, would I, have... I had never intended to let him see any of that in the first yeah. place, so I would never just fucking flaunt that shit. No, the question was just more about the interaction with me and him. Yeah, um, but you answer you... your question, Naya. Um, my my intelligence is plus two. My mis my wisdom is uh, plus zero. So though I might be intelligent <laughs> enough to know an opportunity uh, and when to jump on it, I'm not wise enough to uh, learn how to clean myself up for every opportunity. Okay, fair. Now, uh, a couple other orders of business before we, we uh, move along. Um, the, uh, the, the, the burning cores. Um, now... Uh, I did have one idea for that. Uh, I but... believe you had four of those, right? Five, including the previous one. The, yeah, in the previous one, I was actually going to ask about if the uh, FOMOR um, uh, uh, liver had... Uh, strong, funky enough acid to process the crystal into a uh, form that it could be attached to my gun. Yeah, well, um, so on on that subject, when you visit Soriana to check that out, um, uh, you find that her uh, table is stained in ways it was not previously stained, and uh, she frowns and she says, I had to throw it away. It didn't work. It was... I don't know if it was strong enough, but whatever Alvis sent over was it, was... it was rancid by the time it got here and leaking, and I... My hands still kind of smell, and... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. I tried using it, but it, it, it didn't work, unfortunately. Um, if you could find something like... Um, we, you ever run into one of those big oozes that eats everything? Uh, ooh, that... I feel like we've seen one at some point out here. It wouldn't be unreasonable to think somebody who was melted by the redshift couldn't have turned into one. If, well, redshift or no, um, if you get something like that, uh, usually, depending on the type, you can get it into a glass vial. Um, if, you know, if you're careful with your hands. Um, 
something like that would be perfect. Otherwise, uh... Oh, I would certainly have Elvis ever use his mage hand. He is perfect. quite um, handy with that um, pun and all. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we'll have to keep trying. Um, and the same will go for the other four, um, if you're planning on doing anything, uh, the same thing with those, uh, to, to, uh, uh, like to attach it to weapons, for example. Yeah. Uh. Um, but, uh, Alvis, you were asking about, um, let's see, you were asking about attaching those to Keen. Um, and I have a very legitimate reason, like, why, like, a, a symbology he would have put okay. together. Go ahead. So, Keen, when he came out, was all, like, oily and black and, and, and moldable, right? Alvis Taver uh, connects this uh, to his uh, finding uh, by, his, uh, by his mentor, his teacher, right? Very similarly, was he small moldable, slimy, and disgusting to look at. Still kind of ugly. But, with a fiery passion ignited him towards who he is now and who he sees himself becoming. And this drives him to become greater. Smithy says, you sure you're not a bard? Because that sounds kind of like some bard shit. But <laughs> I guess we could try. Do, it. <laughs> do I have the uh, the aptitude of bardism for you? Nah, I guess not. Uh, hey, we'll try it though. It's worth a shot, right? Uh, so, um, so summon up your uh, your pet. And uh, we'll see what see what we can do with uh, this thing. He, he'll take he's he's got the um, cores uh, in a box um, safe away um, that he can uh, grab with a, a padded glove, put up on a stone table for you. Just one of them. I beg Decus for uh, his focus or, or the thing I need to borrow from Decus. This is allowed. Sweet. Uh, find familiar. Okay, no, okay, uh, yeah. As ritual. Or You'll spell. just have to um, spend the marks for it and then you're good. <laughs> Ten. Okay, now that's easy enough. It might not be a bad idea for you to uh, consider buying uh, one such razor from the road so you can do the summoning should uh, dangerous circumstances uh, lead to a similar situation. Yeah, but then you'd have to carry it. But then I also I, I, I also need to buy a, a body for the new fiery form of... Yeah, the plan, the plan is to get Keen a body in any case, so... Um, yeah, yeah, the fiery form is just to power it. So, so uh, you bring your your oily rat back to Smithy and uh, present her to the um, to the object. Now, now these these cores are um, kind of similar to how the uh, salamanders themselves they're uh, as described. Uh, orange red uh snake like creatures with a uh humanoid torso on top um but they have these um uh long long spines uh uh from their head backs uh down their arms um uh all, all the way down uh portions of their tail that uh twist and 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 buck in the way that resembles flames um and uh e even this this organ that um they have uh, uh behind their heart that generates uh most of the heat that fills their bodies is um 
it is uh it is kind of like a wreath of uh of of these spines um <laughs> uh so um hot always hot to the touch uh very very hot to the touch while a salamander like magnius might be able to control his body temperature he's always hot uh well over 100 degrees to the touch um but uh they can flare up to levels that um can melt metal uh with ease um you've even seen um uh magnius himself uh while while waiting for the redshift to pass uh just for fun he would um take a piece of spare metal that he had and just you know mold like mold it like clay in his hands um so this this organ is the source of the salamander's ability to generate that amount of heat and it is always very very hot um that is a so, driving so, question if I've ever seen one made manifest. Uh, what would you like to have Keen do with this object that you have? No. All right. I look at Keen straight in the eye and I'm all like, this, this needs to become our passion. And Alvis Taver places his hand on it. Brashly, brazenly, even. Your bare hand. Yeah, yeah. Brazenly places his hand on it uncaring for the pain it will cause him. Okay. Uh can you make a can you make a nice con save for me then? Ow uh, <laughs> uh okay. Um uh it's it's super fucking hot. Your hand is like seriously on a on, on a hot of on a hot stove right now. Are you gonna keep your hand there? Crying, he is. Going yeah, yeah, yeah. Point. You, like this is your decision. You can you can remove or you can you can keep your hand there and endure the pain. Yeah, crying, and in in order to make a point, this is our passion. Raging All right. and insane. So um, so and as, as when, while you're doing this. Um, Keen uh, comes around to the to the opposite side from where you are touching this object, and um, she also uh, touches it with her um, paws that she has, and uh, immediately ignites. She is on fire now. Sweet. Uh, is she in pain? That's a good question. She doesn't seem like it at the moment. You are in pain, though. You're 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 forced to remove your hand from the object. Ah, absolutely. By now. Um, and you see a, uh, your, your hand is angry with, Ooh, with this, is it your... this will hurt, uh, for some time. Uh, I, I, at least I know a friendly lizard who might have a salve for me. Um, as soon as you let go and Keen also lets go, um, the, the flames die down. And she turns back to oil. Neat. I look over to Smitty. 
He says, uh, well. I was making an Arcana check, uh, but he says, well, I don't really know what happened, uh, but. I, um, I'm pretty sure all this would have summoned me over. I would have been interested in seeing this process anyway, so I would probably have been watching too. That's certainly up to Elvis. Oh, absolutely. I, I would have just uh, asked literally just now, help me, Nimbus. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, then, then Nimbus can make an Arcana check as well. Oof. <laughs> Not my best <laughs> work. <laughs> um, you think that um, there was some empowerment going on? Uh, definitely, I was stab her through the th through the pain. You 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 can grit your teeth and and see that something happened. Um, you're not you're not sure how she would be able to to maintain that longer term. Hmm. Can Alvin Staver talk to Keen? Like have a conversation. Um, familiars are generally pretty smart, uh, but they can't uh, speak. So if Naya did a speak to animals, could she speak to Keen to find out what the hell happened? I think they're technically beasts, correct? Uh, oh, I don't know. Check. They're a spirit that takes the form of an animal. Um. It is a celestial fey or fiend instead of a beast. So if you had a spell that would communicate with beasts, it would, they wouldn't actually be able to communicate with you because they're spirits. If you had something that let you talk to spirits, though, then sure. I don't think I do. Let me look. And the fact, I mean, Keen is a very small animal. The fact that she survived at all says something else was going on. I mean, the fact that she just survived. Yeah, I mean, she has one HP. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, right. she didn't take any damage. She didn't. So that's amazing and miraculous and something in its own right. Um, am, am I allowed to ask Dekus Senpai for help? Or, or Sensei, rather? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I go to Decus and I explain to him what happened. And I also confide into him what I'm trying to do as well. He being a cat familiar. Uh, um and uh and he, he says, Well, it sounds to me like you managed to pull some kind of power out of that uh, rock. Um, if you could find a way to maybe uh, perhaps not the, completely the right word, but distill it into into a form that is less immediately harmful to you. Maybe you could channel it that way. Consistently. And hopefully without damaging yourself. Interesting. But you think it has to be uh, invoked through me in order to have any effect with Keen. It couldn't be used, say, as some kind of fuel source. Well, the sort of thing you're doing requires less of a fuel source and more a personal connection, as the familiar is an extension of your own will taking form. So while th this this automaton of yours would, would certainly need fuel and this might serve a dual purpose. Um, if you could find a way to meaningfully connect with this object 
then you may be able to perhaps even permanently attach your familiar to it. Apparently, Gareth's machine died. Oh, no. He just came running in. Okay, I'm I'm sorry about that. I think we were kind of at the end of that conversation anyway, or close enough to it. Um, uh, please do your best to get your machine back online, and I will well, attend to everybody else. Absolutely. Uh, what was, like, the last ten... Okay, so... Uh, basically, what he said is, uh, you might be able to use it as a power source, but you need some kind of personal connection to use it as a conduit without hurting yourself. Cool, that's what I got from it. Sweet, thank you. I'll be back in, like, a few. Good luck. Okay. Um, so, uh, the other thing that happens when you all um, are at Orvis is uh, Dex summons you, actually. This might happen before uh, that whole familiar thing went down. Um, so who would like to, to go? Uh, well, if I we're mean, summoned, we're all going. Yeah. yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, As you arrive, he is uh, casting his sanctuary spell on his office. Um, he pauses for a second. Just give me a minute just to precaution today and uh, finishes it up so that um, the area around the office is, is safe and secure. Uh, and he says, okay, uh, this is sort of important, so I don't want any um, any uh, creeping eyes around here, uh, just in case they have eyes on us, um, like Magnius was suggesting. Um, I was having a conversation with your uh, with, with our with our fiery friend um, on the way back, and uh, it seems like he said while we were at uh, Aris's place. Um, that there is somebody, uh, this this Prince Daymare, on the side of the dragons, who has uh, the ability to descry. Um, not unfamiliar to me, uh, but it has its limitations. Uh, you can only view places you have been, uh, or people that you know. Um. So, uh, and e even even then, only a few minutes at a time. Uh, I was thinking how useful it would be after hearing your report from um, the other day if we could scry the places we need to see. I realized we have a device that does this, sort of. Um, and uh, he, uh, y you've noticed that his, his workstation is um, stacked high uh, with books and tools, and he sweeps away some of this pile um, and pulls out a... Uh, sort of mithril disc um, and uh, with the disc has several articulated uh, hooks around the rim um, almost like a beetle uh, and he says I had an idea What if I make what 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 if I make a very small sort of obelisk? Not not one that would protect anybody, but one that could connect 
to the, commu the, the long range communication network that we have. Instantaneously, we can communicate between our forts right now merely by willing it, by standing in front of the obelisk. Any of us can can stand there and call upon another one and see the vision of whoever is on the other side and hear their voice. We can see each other and even um, even multiple forts at a time. We've been able to, to meet more efficiently than ever. This has been an amazing boon for us. Um, not relying on, on mail or, or, or messengers anymore. But what if we could put an obelisk at the location that you staked out and we could have somebody stake it out from the safety of one of our forts? Are you following me? He, that would be amazing. That would be awesome. Disc around, um, right. As he speaks. Um, obviously, we can't put an entire obelisk over there. That would be impossible. Um, at, at, at least as long as it's, it's owned by the, the, the dragons. But um, I've, been, I've, I've spent the past few days working on this device. And I think if a team could place this device in a location where it would be able to see the fort um, and possibly hear it uh, in a place that wouldn't be noticed, uh, we could keep watch on that place as long as we need to, to see what's going on over there. You wouldn't have to put yourselves in danger. We wouldn't have to send other scouts out in danger. Um, I haven't really talked to Lucent about this idea, uh, but um, I've kind of been uh, a little busy working. Um, is it... How big of a device would it be? Uh, well, he holds it up. So uh, he, he's a Goliath, so his hands are pretty big, and even his, in his hands, it's a decent size. It's about a foot in diameter. Okay. Uh, kind of this, this uh, bulbous plate of Mithra. Uh, and you see on the, um, on the uh, top side, where the hooks do not hook, uh, is a um, small bud of the same onyx that's used in the obelisks. Um, he tells you, uh, this is enough to uh, act as a focus. It would not produce a blue shift field uh, capable of protecting anyone um, uh, per perhaps enough if you if you 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 know kept your hand within an inch but uh not not useful um however uh it would allow us to uh hopefully connect it to the um network and uh he flips it over on the on the underside uh where where all of the hooks do hook um there's a slot and uh he holds up one of the one of the um magical devices that you recognize as one of the batteries that are used to power the obelisks. Um, and uh, every obelisk that has been built so far takes a few of these. They all last a few weeks. Um, and they are um, uh, they are sent back and forth uh, between the Commission and the Empire uh, to be um, charged in places of high magic, absorb the ambient energies and use to make sure these obelisks work. Uh, the commission has enough on hand that you all have never really had to worry about them There's yourselves. Dex is usually responsible for taking care of these things. Um, but he, he, he says, um, I, I built it with a battery slot. So you can put the battery in. It will remain active for the duration, and it should last a few weeks. 
uh, we, we may need to go retrieve the thing, uh, assuming it is not found. Um, but it would last long enough for us to get a very good look at what is going on at that fort. It's a remote eyeball. You're right. How many of these could be reasonably manufactured, do you think? It will be rich. Uh, honestly, the onyx is the limiting factor. Um, but, as always, uh, but uh, if we have enough of it, I could get you a pretty quick turnaround on these. Um, as of right now, with the materials I have on hand, uh, maybe a max of three or four. Hmm. It just what occurs to me four that... four would be huge! Right. Given, given what this would give us, we could... We, we should keep at least one on hand with us in every mission. We may come yeah, across a location that we want to observe. Yep. How far seeing are they? Uh... Sounds more like far listening. And are they directional, or yeah, is it just listening, or is it, it like be as far as a, as a human eye? So if you put it somewhere where, for example, you can see the door to this fort, uh, it should also be able to see the door to this fort. We'd uh, much like you see on the obelisk when you communicate with uh, with somebody else. You should be able to see uh, the 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 window to the place you are looking at, essentially. Right. Basically, as if you were standing at the obelisk. Exactly. Is it directional? Uh, yes. So uh, it, you, would, you would need... I've designed it such that if you um, place the hooks, uh, for example, in a, uh, in a tree or uh, upon a wall or in the ground, uh, well, the ground might not be the best because then it would be looking straight up. So perhaps on a wall or a tree would be uh, the best idea. And then it could look in a direction. Does it have a way to be suspended? Or is it... Yes, it comes with many small hooks around okay. the perimeter that can hook into uh, most any porous material. What can they do yeah, with it? Mithril, right? If yes. They find it and try to use it against us. What exactly can they do with it? Can they track the locations of question. our fort? Of all of well, our locations? That is always... That, that is the danger. Uh, they would be able to connect to the obelisk network if they could figure out uh, if, if, if this thing was active. And it would be active if we were using it to spy on something. Uh, so they would be able to see whoever is currently observing it um, I suppose it would be possible to reverse engineer it to find the locations, although uh, personally I'd find that a pretty difficult task if I didn't already know what I was doing. Um, now I, that we know they have a powerful wizard, I wouldn't like to underestimate him, though. I, um, I think we should consider it almost like a trap lock and key system. If, if we can set something up where... Um, we can touch it with a device to arm and disarm um, a feature of it that would be uh, something that just uses the, the remainder of the battery all at once and kind of blows it out and destroys it uh, if it's I tampered see. with. Exactly. So or they... a one-way mirror. Mm -hmm. If they try to uh, tamper with it, and we would, of course, see that they're trying to tamper with it, we can just make it explode if it doesn't on its own. Uh, well, here's an idea for that. Um, uh, we would need whoever owns it to be able to uh, place a exploding glyph. Glyph of warding. Glyph of warding. Hmm. Who among us is capable? I I would need the scroll, or at least to uh, learn it from someone among us who already knows it. Amber Green, you're capable. I, I was I was actually just going. Do I know Glyph of Warding? I might. 
Uh, let's take a look. I'm looking, I don't see it. There it is, level three. Yeah, I was going to say it's either three or four. Boom, there it is, yeah. So I guess I do know Glyph of Warding. Wow, that's a hell of a uh, component requirement, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. So because well, we can, because we can help with that. Like, like we could spend all of our downtime if we had enough. If we had enough money, we could spend all of my downtime just burning glyphs into each of these. Well, here, here's the problem. You must place the glyph at the location. I can't put it on the actual device and carry it around. Place it on the object, but then the object cannot be moved. I see. That's too bad. I was just thinking, man, I would love to put yeah. a, a uh, glyph yeah, of wording so on my one wheel. If you read the spell uh, description in, in some detail, that is the uh, that is the thing. Um, but he, he says uh, the object is fragile enough that um, an explosion generated by that glyph should damage it beyond repair. At, at the very least, it should damage the onyx or the battery so they wouldn't be able to use it. Uh, without those two things, it's not very... It's uh, It would be extremely difficult to reverse engineer in any way. Uh, plus, if it explodes, it could just kill whoever grabs it. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, so... But then you would need to be prepared to um, cast the spell upon the object when you place it after you place it. I suppose with the glyph of warding, you can um, prime it to go off if certain people touch it, if I'm not mistaken. So it could just be anyone outside the expedition and it will detonate on its own. That way we wouldn't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, I've, I've heard some people also use passwords. Work. So, Naya's concern is that it's going to be pretty obvious, she thinks. Who could have come up with this as a device? They may not be able to figure out, you know, if they find it, they may not be able to figure out exactly what it does or exactly where it came from, but they're going to, they would likely assume it came from the commission. Well, that, that much is true. Uh, uh, I think this is a situation where we can risk the discovery of a, a, a small expensive bubble, or we can risk the discovery of several of your lives. Um, what, um, how much of the disc actually has to be showing for it to see? Like, can we embed it in a tree, for example? Perhaps right. have the wood you grow could, over it? Well, you could most likely hide it in a nook, as long as, um, as, long as it has a, a line of sight, effectively. Um, so you, you wouldn't be able to hide uh, uh, to bury it completely. But um, a, uh, getting, the, getting the outer rim uh, kind of buried and camouflaged would, would probably help. I suppose if you reshaped a tree and made it look like a kind of a hollow in a tree, can what what's the surface color of it? Uh, so uh, mithril, so it's uh, like a silvery blue, and then the onyx is black, and the underside is not super relevant. It's much the same. And the onyx part is the looking part or the charging part? Uh, that is the looking part. So how big is the actual uh, looking part on it? Uh, about three inch diameter. Oh, yeah. So we could definitely find, or I guess, Naya, with your, with your powers, you could probably shape, um, reshape a tree with the wood to just leave that little space open. It would be nearly impossible for them to find unless they go to that exact specific tree and manage to locate it, and I, unless they're just in the habit of cutting trees down for some reason, I just don't see them doing that. I just don't think that's like anybody's likely to notice it at all. 
unless sunlight glints off of it or something. And I, You're not likely to go over to some tree where it's hanging from unless there's some reason for them to go to that tree. Right, exactly. If we can block we it safely. Saw the, we already saw what the front of that fort looks like. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the trees were dense enough that you would be able to put it in one that's not right in the front, but would still have a clear line of sight on everything and would have some of the shade from it in the nearby trees. That uh, would well, reduce... regarding the trees near the fort, there actually were not any. It was rather bare no? over there. Oh, the... never mind. Um, how about what did the um, since it was a hilly area, what did the rocks and stuff was it like a cliff overhanging it or uh, uh yes, sheer slope? The, the fort was nestled uh pretty deep into a cliffside, um, and uh, sort of uh, as I described last time, you think like you could probably get up above the fort, um, there's there wouldn't really be a safe way down into the fort. But if you were just kind of like trying to get up there to look at the fort's front door, you think you could definitely find a location um, up up and behind that would give you a line of sight on the door. Was there perhaps like a stretch of shiny dark stone along the um, along the the cliffside there? Um, not not so much shiny dark. Uh, Dex says. Uh, Painting it might be um, a good idea. I can see if Mercutio has anything like that. But, uh, yes, uh, mundane camouflage could also work. Because I, uh, if we can get above, I can probably levitate and safely um, put it somewhere where it's high up and hard to notice, but gives us a clear view of the comings and goings from the front door. Yeah, that that would be exactly what we need. Yeah, well, that's, uh, we can definitely do that. If you're able to do this at the next waning, then give me another night to finish this thing up. I'll have it ready for you in the morning. And, uh, I will give you the supplies to go out there and get this done. Excellent. Uh, awesome. Very clever. I think I will need to be here. Right. At the obelisk to ensure that it is properly calibrated on both ends. So you may you may have to do some adjustments when you get there. I haven't obviously haven't been able to test this out over very long distances yet. Uh, this is kind of a new invention. So uh, we may need to do a little bit of work uh, while there. Uh, but as long as we're careful, it should be okay. You... Uh, I'm comfortable. Wait. I've, I've tested short range. You've just made me think of something else. If you're able to get to this sort of range technology using, you know, the, the obelisk stuff that we've already designed, would it be possible to make a communicator where we could simply talk with you or even show you what we're seeing that we carry with us? Well. Even to be able to talk, you know, two-directionally, that would be fantastic in the field. There are, uh, there are spells that can make uh, limited conversation possible, but uh, the true trick that I would have to get around for a portable device uh, believe me, if I could make a portable obelisk, I would have done it a, a long time ago. Um, it's that the way that these obelisks connect and uh, the main obelisks, the, 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 the proper blue shift generators, they connect to the location in the world that they are. They are at a stable, grounded point. Right. Um, were I to move them, they would have to be reset and re recalibrated, essentially. Oh, um, I understand, of course, with you know the ley lines and where, where energy is uh, at. That makes sense. For a smaller device like this, we're effectively doing the same thing, just on a smaller scale. Um, so it will have to be connected to that same network, and once there, would need to be recalibrated, moved. Um, 
it would be difficult to make something that could be used repeatedly, but uh, perhaps something on on a that you could deploy on a on a nightly basis, perhaps at camp or something like that, would be feasible with with this current setup. Hmm. At the very least, one of these devices, if we can deploy it and undeploy it, you would at least be able to... We have, could reuse it. Yeah, you'd have sight on what we're up to, and you know we could, I guess, write messages and hold them up or speak at the, uh, the device, if you could be able to hear it on this side. And... It should include audio. Okay, uh, then then it'd be a way for us to report in in the field. I think that's actually really useful. Even one way, it's you know being able to deliver a message. It's better than skywriting, and I don't have to burn a spell slot for that. Yeah, it's or uh, sending was the other method that we had that was uh, right fairly exhaustive of the uh, magics that we have available. Uh, let let me see what more inventions I can whip up uh, after the, after we prove uh, this one in a in a field test. Uh, that sounds good. Good, we've got a deal then. I'll um, just so long I'll, as it's I'll good with the Blake to... Brigadier. She might, you know, have other plans. She'll, of course, she'll be fine with it. I'll uh, I'll, I'll ask her in the morning. All um, right. Yeah, I think we, since we came right back that way um, from our last adventure here, I think we've kind of figured out our mobility across the area here and probably be able to make good time. Good. Good. Then I'll look forward to uh, hearing from you there. Uh, stop Stop by here tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the parts that you require. And... Um, and then we just have to wait for the uh, redshift to do its thing. Um, oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, I've arranged for uh, our friend Magnius to uh, be off to Fort Maricus uh, in the next waning. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to speak to him about or uh, you know, interrogate out of him uh, before you go, before he goes. Um, you you may want to check in. Um, otherwise, uh, he has been uh, quite cooperative, so um, we're happy to uh, help him get get out of here. I suppose. Well, giving him a purpose will be helpful. I think. Uh, has anybody asked if he's been to the tower over, you know, yonder in the skyline there? No, I don't, I don't think anybody has. Someone should ask him about the tower and if it's, that's related to, like, the Dragon King or, or whatnot or what, 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 yo, Magni is some, somebody speak lizard fire tongue at him. I can do that. No, I, I need to know something about the tower. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Um, you can find him. Um... Monty, Ma, bet. I I got an idea. You speak lizard folk, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll translate for you. You can find uh, the salamander in um, the mess hall, uh, where he is uh, both being guarded um, by a few people. And kind of just avoided by everybody else, uh, for the most part. It's not the weirdest thing that they've seen around the fort, but uh, word obviously travels extremely quickly in these tiny forts um, of who who this person is. Um, because so, it's you know. on my mind, and Naya made a mention about how I should prepare before I uh, go and talk to people or whatnot. Uh, I I writ up I wrote up a uh, a quick letter a, a missive uh, addressed to 
my mentor uh, that uh, I want to put in that scroll case. Did I keep the scroll case or did I sell or not sell, uh, give it to the guild? Uh, which scroll case? There is a scroll case the that self-preserving like, one. Yeah, exactly. I thought I you gave that, that to um, uh, Decus, didn't you? Did you? Oh, maybe. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I thought, thought you, you did. did too, actually. Actually. I would not have given that away. I would have just either well, I would have either given it given it to the guild, or I would have uh, I would have kept it. Hmm. Even if you gave it to Dex, you could probably ask for it back. So that's. No big deal. Did you just want to put a letter in it? Yeah, I wanted to put a letter in it, and I would assume it might preserve itself so that Magnius could handle it. That's a good idea. And okay, okay. Uh, with this missive, I wanted to give that to him, and under the aspect, uh, 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 sorry, not, uh, under the guise of just forgetting to give this to him, so that he could have a means to getting into the guild. I wanted to also ask, yo, I've been here for years and I don't know what that tower is. We all kind of wonder what that thing is, right? You know, Mont, eh? Right, Mont Laren? Right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, do, do you know anything about it? Is it related to the dragon? Like, all right, I'm, I'm going to, um, take 30 seconds to go get some more water before I do the the, the fucking Magnus voice. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, want to I mean, yeah, water. a drink as well. All right, I'm back full of water. Um, so yeah, the the tower you asked. Oh, hello, everybody here. Uh, I think we all yeah. have yep. drinks. Oh, okay. I'm back. Right. Everybody good then? Yeah, I'm good. Cool. Um, so uh, the tower you were asking about. Yeah. Um, what 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 specific line of questioning? Uh, what I said is like, what do you know about it? Is it related to like the dragon or something? Like, do you guys know what's going on? Is it a mystery to you guys? Like, we're all here at the fort uh, interested in that uh, piece of our skyline. Well, it's gone now, isn't it? No, the, the the tower is uh, the the big tower. The oh. water tower. Oh, 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 the big tower. I was I thought you were talking about the water tower. Never mind. Um, so ubiquitous with the skyline that even our great mage has forgotten about its existence. Uh, he says. Uh, <clears throat> that's true. I. Sometimes forget it is there myself. Uh, your organization's goal is to destroy that thing, is it? Isn't it? I can't exactly tell you. I'm here to uh, rally the people whom you might meet uh, upon. Uh, leaving this place. Yeah, I mean, acting as mediator, mediator, I would say, no, 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 we don't, we don't seek to destroy the tower unless that's what it takes to stop the redshift. Uh, yes, I guess that was the official reason why I was here. Uh, you see, I, I'm a student. I, I'm here to study and uh, gather uh, interesting effects here, send them back to the guild. Uh, those people whom uh, that missive is, you know, for, it'll help you get in. 
Does um, Malari transmit this blather? Uh, yeah, I mean streamlined, <laughs> but <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> how how streamlined? He's very straightforward about blathering. Uh, I mean, it's like, like I I only learned draconic a couple of years ago, yeah, so pretty fucking streamlined. I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, he says, uh, well, I I understand that your organization wants to, to the Redshift Storm put a stop to it. The the tower that you seek, I have heard. Rumors and gossip uh, among my companions about what can be found in that direction. Uh, it's it is a dangerous place there. You're closer to the center of the storm, and as your organization is familiar with, evacuation, while possible, as far away as we are, if, if you are under the shadow of the tower, you would not be able to flee so quickly. If you are caught by surprise, then you may find yourself unable to escape. But some have gone there before and come back safely. Uh, so are you insinuating that the tower isn't necessarily under the dragon's control? No. No, we... We do not control the Redshift Storm. Anyway, uh, anyway. Alvis Taver corrects his grammar. Yes, well. Yes, they they who I have abandoned. No. They abandoned you. Oh yeah. Alvis Taver begins blathering about the guy who they left outside of the gate, showing that this guy is extremely lucky in the fact that, you know, I'm here to give him a job. It was sheer uh, bothersy. It was like, oh my god, I can't believe they would do that to somebody. My yeah. god, they would never do something like that. Uh, as Alva speaks, actually, I would I would intercept that um, because I, I want to be a little bit more diplomatic about broaching that subject. Uh huh. Uh, so as I see that, you know, that's kind of the direction Alvis is going. I, I sort of like, I'll rip like raise a hand uh, just to see if Alvis sees it. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to actually stop him or anything, but. Uh, you know, you know, you know, knows a little bit of common, but he's he's you know uh, much more familiar in his other languages. Right, uh, but yeah, but I would uh, I would to Magnia say, um, I actually had a question about your compatriots. If you were willing to talk, uh, it might be difficult for you though, and I I don't want to press you. I have I, I I have little choice but to but to answer your questions. It's, it's all right. Very well. Um, we approached the lair that you pointed out to us. Uh, it, it was perhaps empty or uh, at least un, unattended by the main force, but we saw one of your kind um, standing before it. Uh, we didn't recognize the, the creature as one that we fought specifically, but we suspected it might have been. Um, he seemed very distraught when the red shift started, and it still was not... Uh, in that fortress, no one lowered the drawbridge to let it in. No one, no one approached it. Um, is this normal? What what happened here? We've never had a situation like you before. The I can only guess that. One of my companions who escaped the battle 
fled for their lives, much like I might have done if I was not cornered, attempted to go back, and, uh, well, perhaps missed the, the door, the, um, as I told you before, the only way back over such a large distance is the, uh, the spellweavers who teleport our group one way and the other. If they were left without the ability to uh, be allowed into that group, then they would be stuck outside. And we, we all know what being stuck in the Redshift Storm causes tales. Absolutely. So it's what we surmise. They, they left it out there to die. Or be damaged. Potentially worse, yeah. I assume they expect the same has happened to me. Yeah, I'll just nod at that uh, and, and say, well, as my little friend was, was about to say, uh, in, in some ways, perhaps it was fortunate that you were cornered. I cannot fully... Fortune smiles on the adaptable. Compliment your attempts to contest the ownership of this land against the Dragon King, but I've seen the power and the strength that you all have here working together and agree that it, that it could rival some of what we have done under the Dragon King. And to that end, the hospitality that you've shown to a prisoner is, I can say, I, it is appreciated, at least. Uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to ask him about, Alvis? Sure, Nimbus, you could spend your downtime on that. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very specifically, um, that uh, even if he doesn't uh, get a job with the people at the guild, that he should uh, definitely talk about uh, these lands as much as he absolutely can. Send people our way. <laughs> so you want him to be a press tour guy? Yeah. Recruiter. I mean, firsthand, was born in the wild land. Dude, this guy make us a lot of potential... Revenant. I see. Well. And yourself, too. Like, not a, like this is not just me shilling for my future. This is to set yourself up for a comfortable life. Save your money. You will be astounded by the amount of riches. You will feel as if you were a Dragon King yourself. He, he looks... He he looks taken aback by the the very idea of himself owning riches. I was born underground, not even knowing the sun, and my mentor brought me to the light, showing me that the shadows on the wall that I thought were reality were in fact shadows cast upon by that very light. <laughs> I would translate that word for word. Hail Plato. I, <laughs> I understand. I now wear gold. Where I used to wear mud. Well, I, I don't know what I will do outside the Redshift Storm, but I will take your uh, treaty and 
bring it to your master. And I suppose if they have a place for me, I will I will accept it for as long as I'm able. Has someone explained? Go and get some. Has someone explained to him that he'll be in a place that does not have a redshift? Yes. Okay, so he doesn't have to be afraid for his life every week? He he understands. Um, I know of the world outside of the redshift storm, but I've I've never left, and the um, stories are limited. Little experience. I've spoken to few people here who are willing to tell me their homes and the strange. All right. Well, if you're done, I would thank him for his time and wish him luck. Go get some, brother. I cannot wish you good luck on your mission in good faith, but thank you for what you have done so far. Okay. Is that all you wanted? Oh, yeah, that's all I wanted from him. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Magnus will go uh, uh, after after this redshift um, and be on his way. Um, Albus, uh, you were able to slip your letter to him, uh, and since Sharp is busy at Aris's tower, uh, you were able to kind of... Uh, Put in the Wanda Overseer Vim and kind of get rid of the Wanda Overseer Alcoza. So. Unless he wanted both letters to go out. Yeah, but. So, if I were to prevent the second letter to go out, I actively went against uh, the guild. If, uh, I, if I personally put a letter in the hands of Magnius and then told him to seek out a person, I was just being due diligent. Maybe (laughs) even fastidious if somebody wanted to, like, comment on it in some rudish way to get me in trouble. Okay, so you've given Magnius the the prime letter to Overseer Vim, and the letter to Overseer Alcoze is off in the mail somewhere. Yeah! Yeah, exactly. This is uh, Alvis Tavers' hopes. She'll re- she'll receive that 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 gnomish woman. She'll receive that well after Vim has already taken Magnius under his wing. And by then, by then, Magnius is part of your agency, and Alcoza oh. has no jurisdiction over that. That's beautiful. That's you know that's what Alvis wanted, but he had no idea if he could beat the postal service or not. I mean, it, 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 it's mostly a matter of whether you think Alcoza can find Magnius before he finds Vim. Um, so, uh, yeah, that you've got a pretty good dice roll. I I was legit worried about that. Um, okay. Uh, any, any other anybody else have stuff for the salamander that they wanted to to bring up? One last one last double check. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, then, in that case, I think we might call it a little bit early tonight. Um, we have just a little bit of stuff left to do at Orvis before you guys are ready to go, but I think we're pretty much uh, mission ready for next time. Um, okay. So, uh, how many more um, potions can we buy? Is it three? Uh, potions from Soriana? Yeah. 
machine. Oh yeah, what do those cost these days? Uh, oh yeah, could, could I get a salve for my hand from Suriana? Uh oh, right, I almost forgot. Um, so Albus, uh, what what would have happened thanks to your um, uh, burning uh, experiment? Oh um, yeah, I had an idea about that too. Okay, well, uh, first she's able to give you a little uh, salve, but um, your hand is going to be ah! um, for uh, for some time. Um, likely the next week or two, it'll take time to heal on its own. Um, even if you had magical healing. Um, so, uh, you will not be able to use your left hand properly for a little while. Alright. I'm totally down with that. Uh, what was your other idea? Oh yeah, uh, uh, it was... It was like a control gauntlet that uses the uh, the concentrated essence of the gem or gems. I see. It, it, in the sense of like out of character uh, Marvel power fists. Well, um, are you talking about controlling uh, Keen's little mecha? Yes, exactly. Be, or, or at least giving the impetus, the the connection, you know. Uh, well, you might Magic you might item. be able to get a yeah, like a gauntlet connection if you have to be touching the stuff for it to work. Um, exactly. But uh, the idea behind the mech itself is that Keen is kind of the driver um, of that thing, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be the the efficient way. But I mean, we're technically connected to, uh, yeah. That that would be the most, uh, ace to the vision way. I get what you're saying. Um, okay, got it. But um, we were sacrifices could be made like i already have to in some ways do the beast master thing when i want to uh see through keen so uh, yeah, i yeah. i could see uh you know maybe it taking an action or around similar to the echo knight or something like that uh if i wanted to do something like an attack with it or whatnot because it would be me directly helping keen along with moving the thing or something like i don't know this is all speculation right whenever we get to the point where you have this object we will uh we'll make some definition of stat blocks for you yeah um as for potions uh we got healing climbing poison and water breathing um it may be about time that a few more are added to this list but for now that's what you've got uh 25 25 30 and 50 respectively and you can buy a total of three per... Uh, I will take two healing potions, then. Three for the group, yeah. by the way. Oh, Ooh. okay. Ooh. Then just one. Three for the group? Okay. Yes. Wow. No, go ahead. I mean, unless anybody else is going to get any... No, 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 no. I got a heal. You, Those of you who don't have heals, go ahead and take them. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to get more. You, you don't have to buy all three. Actually, she has a uh, spider climb potions, right? Yeah, climbing. Um, how much is that? Uh, twenty five. Twenty five. Uh, I believe those, those give you a climbing speed. They don't give you spider climb. Just so you're aware. A climbing speed, so you still would be able to climb with it. It's just not the spell spider climb. Exactly. You're you're not you're not cl you're not walking up walls. You are being good at climbing. Uh, would that be enough for uh, Amber Green to climb down the cliff face and place the device? Uh, so yeah, basically, if you have a climbing speed, it means that you don't need to make checks on difficult climbing terrain or anything like that. Oh, fantastic! Well, then yeah, I'll I'll pick up one of those to make that task easier. Otherwise, okay. I would have yeah, to so basically levitate and carry him. Yeah, yeah, that that, <laughs> that works. Cool. Um, Where are my marks at? So one healing, one climbing? Yeah. He's going to buy a healing potion, too. Okay, so it's 25. Good. You're good. Cool. Thank you, Lizard Man. Girl, girl. Basically paid for me. Oh, yeah, Suriana, too. 
but I mean, the the one who paid for the potion was not. I understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll call it there, and next time uh, we'll send you guys off back to the uh, Princeling's Fort. Uh, we're on on the nineteenth um, next, so we've got next week is off. Then so we're back. Okay. All right. Yep. Cool. cool. Okay. Thanks for joining, everyone. <laughs> thanks, yeah, thanks for joining, everyone. Thanks yeah, for listening. Thanks, man. Hey, folks.